This is K.M. Wyland, and you're listening to the 124th episode of the Wordplay Podcast. It's funny how a new location can completely change your writing. As someone who thrives on regularity and routine, I'm always surprised, usually pleasantly, when I change something up and find a new burst of creativity as a result. After remodeling my office a few weeks ago, I'm reaping the benefits of a cleaner, brighter workplace. I'm not in a new setting, but it seems new, so it's been fun adjusting to it. Things have been such a mess around here due to the remodel that my writing has sadly taken a bit of a hit this week. But I'm champing at the bit to get back into the thick of things in my rewrite of my fantasy Dreamlander. My characters are just about to reach the inciting event at the 25% mark, and I can't wait. How to describe your characters, and how not to. The latest post in the video series on my blog discusses some of the do's and don'ts of character descriptions, including how much description you should include and where to include it. You can watch the video on my blog at wordplay-kmwyland.blogspot.com. New videos are posted every Wednesday. And now I hope you enjoy this week's podcast. Action Reaction, the pistons that power your story. Let's say your story is a precision machine. If we were to take the shiny cover off the back of this machine, what we would find inside would be an intricate mess of nuts, bolts, gears, and an engineer only knows what else. At the heart of it all, we'd find two huge pistons running the show. One of those pistons is action. The other is reaction. There are only two things your character can do at any given point in a story. He can either act, or he can react. Those are the only two choices. Within those two choices, the variables are endless, of course. But it's vital that the author understand the differences between the two so he can identify which course is preferable at key moments in the story. So let's take a closer look at how these two pistons chug along in sync, taking turns powering the story forward. What's the difference between action and reaction? At first glance, action and reaction don't seem to need much in the way of explanation. We all know what they are. Action is when your character does something. Reaction is when he does something in response to something that has happened to him. Consider an example from the classic musical, Meet Me in St. Louis. Action. Esther and Rose take action by filling a dance card with the names of all the most undesirable young men in town, and give it to Lucille Ballard, who refused to go to the dance with their brother, Lon, and went instead with Rose's boyfriend, Warren. Reaction. When Lucille makes up with Lon, Esther reacts by trading dance cards with her, so that Esther herself ends up with the undesirable dancing partners. In a sense, of course, Esther's action in filling the dance card is a reaction to Lucille's supposed jilting of her brother, and her reaction to Lucille's turning out to be super nice has her taking action in deliberately trading dance cards. Action equals control. If you overthink the differences between action and reaction, it can get confusing fast. The important thing to remember in telling the two apart is identifying who is in charge of the scene. The character in charge is the one doing the acting. When Esther is plotting revenge against Lucille, she's in charge and Lucille is at her mercy. When Lucille arrives at the dance and insists on making up with Lon and helping Rose and Warren do the same, she effectively takes control of the scene, leaving Esther with no choice but to react. Action and reaction are linked dominoes. Actions and reactions never happen in a vacuum. Authors can't arbitrarily choose one or the other for any random scene. We have to deliberately pair these two powerhouse pistons. They must work in tandem or they won't work at all. A continual onslaught of actions with no alternating reactions will result in a scattered plot that not only barrages the reader with an unvarying and exhausting pace, but also one that featured scenes with no visible connections to one another. Back to the old domino illustration. Action dominoes can't knock into action dominoes, and reaction dominoes can't knock into reaction dominoes. Actions knock into reactions, which knock into actions, and so forth, until you have a perfectly balanced, perfectly paced, perfectly connected story. Thank you for listening to the Wordplay Podcast. To read a transcript of this episode, visit me on the web at wordplay kmyland that's w-e-i-l-a-n-d dot blogspot dot com and be sure to listen again next week. Mm-hmm.